Today's message is entitled, The, Cro the Cost of Victory. In this life, we face struggles, emergencies, and sometimes opposition. These things seem to come from nowhere and take us by surprise. Jesus told us in John 16.33 that in the world, I'm in the world, you're in the world, that in the world you will have tribulations or you could say troubles. So you can have trouble in the world. But he also went on to encourage us in saying, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We have hope in Jesus who is experienced in dealing with troubles. To overcome these troubles victoriously. <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me ask, are you prepared for the next battle in your life? The next situation, the next challenge in your faith or the challenge to your faith. Satan... Um, is an enemy. In other words, we have an enemy that wants to cause us harm. Satan is his name, and his army of well-trained comrades seek to undermine our Christian life. We must face real problems and situations in this life, and we need to know how to deal with them, how to fight them. We must know how to win. I have good news for you this morning. God, through his word, the Bible, gives us clear guidance in dealing with the problems in our life. And so, we will begin this morning by looking into God's written word, uh, uh, giving us wisdom and guidance to answer the question, what do we need to know and do to secure victory? So that's our question this morning. What do we need to know and do to secure victory? Victory in this life. Number one, know there is an enemy. We got to know there is an enemy. King Saul of Israel, in the Old Testament, King Saul of Israel was in, the air, was in an area close to the enemy, to, to, to their enemy, the Philistines. So, for whatever reason, he was there in that area. And he was uh, camped not far from enemy territory. And we read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 17, beginning there. Then raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned, uh, to, turned onto the road of, of Ophah to the land of Shal. Another company turned to the road of Beth Horon. And another company turned to the road uh, of the border that overlooks the valley of Zebulun uh, towards the, toward the wilderness. Here we see that three groups of Philistine raiders came charging out of the enemy camp like bees from an angry nest ready to attack. They split into three directions preparing for attack, ignoring Saul and his Israeli army for the moment. What we learn here is that if you don't know there is an enemy, if you don't understand there is an enemy, you're done for. You're had. You're dead meat, if you would. There was an enemy of Israel, and Saul knew it. There is an enemy of your soul. Do you know this? 1 Peter 5, 8 reads, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. 
Satan seeks to destroy everyone, especially Jews and Christians. The Jews because they are God's chosen people. And the Christians because we have been adopted into the family of God through Christ Jesus. You have an enemy. And the Israelites had an enemy in this story. Many times the enemy of, of your soul may avoid direct attack upon you, fearing your potential response. He knows if you're a child of God. And for him, for him it might not be worth a direct fight. So, he may first move around you, attacking others surrounding you, be that relatives, neighbors, maybe co-workers, so that he can check your response and see if you are alert and aware of his presence. Now, it's an interesting strategy that he might attack the people around you before he decides to attempt an attack upon you to see how you respond, to see if you're alert to his presence or not. And uh, this was just like the Philistines that went around Saul's army to attack those nearby without attacking Saul. And that's what they did first. They, they knew Saul was there. They come charging out like bees but what do they do? They break in front of, going different directions, not confronting Saul, but going to towns and communities nearby and attacking them <clears throat> to see how Saul would respond and see how <clears throat> the military, the Israeli military would respond. Now, uh, so... Uh, that does not mean that everything that happens is caused by the devil, okay? Just because, uh, 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 you know, something happens, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's caused by the devil. Uh, some things just happen in life. We best be aware and learn the difference. Is it Satan or na natural or is it self-inflicted? Sometimes our Problems are something that we brought upon ourselves. Okay? Is it an enemy preparing for an attack? Or is it something in the, in the natural? Or is it something self-inflicted? And we got to learn that. Okay. What do we need to know and do to secure victory? First we said, no, there is an enemy. Got to know that Satan is out there. All right, and we got to know that he has his eye on the, uh, especially the Christian, but he has his eye on everybody trying to mess up their life, but especially Christians and Jews. He wants to uh, raise havoc in their life. But number two we want to look at is understand your enemy's tac uh, tactics. Verse 19 of 1 uh, Samuel 13. Now, there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel. For the, Philist, uh, uh, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make swords and spears. Okay? Unless the Hebrews make swords or spears. There was no blacksmith found throughout all of Israel. Verse 20. But all the Israelites would go down... To the, uh, down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattocks, which is like a pick, uh, and his axe and his sickle. So the Israelites went to the Philistines to sharpen their work tools. One should know not to go into enemy territory. The Israelites were lured into enemy territory to sharpen their tools and weapons. It's a dangerous place to be in enemy territory. It's dangerous in enemy territory. 
Now, concerning you and me, 1 Corinthians 10.13 reads, No temptation shall overtake you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Okay? So, uh, the point here is, don't, don't go into hostile surroundings. The places that tempt you. In other words, don't go down that street if there is a temptation down that street. Don't walk into that store or that establishment that tempts you. Don't watch that TV program or go to that movie. You may need to uh, uh, break that friendship that leads where you do not want to go. There are some friends that you may possibly need to give up if you keep getting temptations from them and you can't shake that or change that, then you go ahead and for your sake, you may need to uh, break that relationship, that friendship. And don't web surf those blue and red zones. <coughs> Our... Uh, adversary the devil tries to lure us into all these different areas you see when we go into enemy territory the enemy can block our way of escape we are prey for the taking in enemy territory one may not escape unscathed if you are currently living your life in enemy territory, quick, make right with God and find the escape route before your destruction comes. Because remember the verse we read, God is, uh, in part, it's God is faithful and would the temptation will make a way of escape. So if you find and realize that you're in enemy territory where you should not be, then quick, make right with God and l look for that way of escape before your destruction comes. Okay, number three for what do you need to do I mean, know and do in order to secure victory. Number three, choose the way of resistance. You do not have to be overtaken by the enemy of temptation. If you choose the way of resistance, James uh, 4, 7 says to submit to God and resist the devil. Submit to God, resist the devil, and what's going to happen? He will flee from you. You have to choose to submit and resist. Choose to make the right decisions and to fight if and when necessary in the spiritual realm. Fight in the spiritual realm if and when uh, it's needed. That's your part. Your responsibility to submit and to resist. We find that it's expensive in enemy territory. Expensive in enemy territory. And you can imagine that. If, you're, if your uh, ability to uh, sharpen your, your uh, tools and your weapons has been removed from you... <coughs> then it becomes expensive. They can charge you whatever they want to, to have your tools uh, and, and weapons sharpened if you go into enemy territory, you see, into hostile territory. And we read this in 1 Samuel 13, verse 20. We're looking at verse 20 now. But all the Israelites would go down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattock, which was his pick, his uh, axe, and his sickle. And the charge for a, for a sharpening was a pim for the plowshares, the mattock, the forks, and the axe uh, <coughs> to set the points uh, of the gourds. So, 
it came about on the day of battle. Ooh, on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people. So on the day of battle, when the battle came, there was not a sword nor a spear found in the hand of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. Now remember Saul was the king and his son Jonathan, that was his son. Uh, but they were found, the sword and the spear were found only with Saul and Jonathan, his son. They were the only two. See, obviously it wasn't cheap to have items sharpened in, in enemy territory. And then they had to add on the cost of travel. It takes time to travel. It costs money perhaps to travel. You got to feed your whatever animal you have, you know, take care of it. Maybe at the stable or wherever. And that you that you used to uh, to travel down there. Uh, so um, <clears throat> there's cost to travel and possibly the purchase of food during the journey. If you couldn't pack enough, then it, you might have to uh, purchase food while you're there, beverage, maybe. Uh, so the price for them was too expensive a price to pay. In that they chose to sharpen tools over their weapons. Forget potentially sharpening weapons, okay? If they had the ability, if they were even permitted to sharpen weapons at all in the enemy territory, they, uh, it was too expensive. It would be expensive to sharpen by the time you, you, you got there. In other words, they forfeited the defense of their country for the sake of tools. Uh, going into enemy territory will rob you of wealth that you should be investing elsewhere. And think about that. When you go into enemy territory in your life, if you do that, if you should do that, uh, then it's robbing you of wealth that you could be investing elsewhere. The booze, the cigarettes, the adult magazines, the unnecessary luxuries, and so on. They all rob you of your wealth. Your family loses, you lose, and even your church loses when you wander into the enemy's territory. All suffer if you go into enemy territory because of your wasted time and money. As you do that, if you do that in your life, you're wasting time, you're wasting your resources, your money in enemy territory. One is a loser while in enemy territory. There's no victory there. Now, back to the Israelites. The Israelites made a great mistake when they gave up their ability to sharpen their own tools and weapons. Their capability to defend themselves was taken away from them when they lost their ability to sharpen their own weapons. It's the same tactic being used today in America. Be alert and forewarned that we must resist the temptation to forfeit, to willingly forfeit our personal weapons of defense for the deception of, quote, our safety, unquote. Under the guise of removing available weapons from society in order to prevent crime. What a joke that is. Right there's a scriptural lesson that we're learning right now. Not to follow. See the Bible is for today. You see examples of life in the scriptures. And you can learn life's lessons in scripture. And just as they, the Israelites, 
uh, were, were, were forfeiting the sharpening of their weapons or the maintaining of their weapons for potential battle, for protection, okay, against an enemy, we can compare that to the silly idea of uh, giving up our weapons uh, to, uh, uh, for, to prevent crime and uh, thus become defenseless ourselves. Now, spiritually speaking, the good book tells us that our spiritual weapon of choice is the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, the Bible. Okay? The enemy of our soul wants to disarm us from the Word of God in our lives. He wants to remove it from our life. He wants to dull the edge of the Bible's influence on our life. He does this in part through the cares of the world. This world is a great place and there is much to truly enjoy and to do. But our spiritual enemy, Satan, and his cohorts, they love to distract Christians from reading and contemplating upon God's word, the Bible. He distracts us by using the cares of the world and the pleasures of this world. So much so that many find Bible reading only on the list of New Year's resolutions or tomorrow's rosters. Tomorrow's roster or New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm going to, maybe I should start reading the Bible or start reading it more. The Bible, people, the Bible is our spiritual weapon, our sword to fight in the supernatural. We cannot and will not effectively win the battles of life without our understanding being armed with the sharpened sword of God's word. How much... Do you read the Bible? Is my question to you this morning. How much do you read the Bible? Let me say right now that reading is not enough. Let's take it to the next level. Reading the Bible is not enough. If you're just reading the Bible only, it is not enough. Take time. Time to study it. Time to meditate upon the the scriptures, the meaning of the scriptures of the Bible and the truths that have been hidden for those who will take the time to dig for them like valuable treasures. You got you got to dig in the ground if you're going to find that treasure chest. You got to uh, get that uh, that meter out and scan the ground if you're going to find the coins and the jewelry that people uh, leave on the beach and, and in the parks and stuff. You got to look for it. You might have to dig a little bit. Take a little a shovel and dig to find those uh, treasures. And so it is with the word of God. You might have to, you, you have to think about the scriptures. What does that mean? How does it apply to my life? Uh, uh, dwell upon it, contemplating it, you know, just to read that nice little story about uh, uh, Saul out there with his uh, military, and he's close to the enemy lines, and the, and the military coming out and attacking cities around him, and so on and so forth, okay, yeah, okay, it's a story, but how, we're, we're seeing how it applies to our life. See, he was getting near enemy territory. They had to go into enemy territory to sharpen uh, anything they needed sharpening because they gave up their right, their freedom to sharpen their own tools and weapons. What a big disadvantage that was to the protection of a nation to be disarmed, to become uh, incapable of defending oneself you see uh, <clears throat> so the Bible is our spiritual weapon 
Our sword to fight in the supernatural. And we cannot and will not effectively win the battles of life without understanding, uh, uh, without understanding being, uh, being armed with the sharpened sword of God's word. All right. Uh, our spiritual enemy is a master at battle. But our God is far superior. Hallelujah. Yet we are in the middle. Between God and Satan. In a way we're the middle man. <laughs> we're in the middle. We need the knowledge of God's word. To fight our battles. If we expect to win our battles. We need that knowledge. We need that sharpening you see. Uh, do we understand how many faults or religions have deceived multitudes of people all because they don't know the truths that are being taught in the pages of Scripture? That's why we have the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the, uh, uh, the Moons, and the uh, uh, Krishnas. Twisted truths that relate to the world's people and the people feel comfortable with it and they end up embracing them. Oh, some of them may have knowledge of the Bible and others may have even read it, but they never spent enough time in the pages of the Bible and as a result, their minds were never fully sharpened by the word and they became deceived by these uh, teachers, these leaders. Know that Satan is building false religions around the world based upon twisted truths of the scriptures. Oh, you can pick up the Bible and you can read it in the scripture. And these, these ministers, these teachers, these leaders, these gods, whatever they want to call themselves, high priests, whatever, they take these truths that are in the scripture and they twist them. And the people may be acquainted with the scripture, but they never sharpened their understanding to realize that it is twisted. That it is not complete truth that, that the angle that they're using to teach. So, to sharpen a sword, you must go over again and again with a sharpener filing down the rough edge into a smooth cutting blade an effective blade you don't want it to be dull so we too need to allow God's word into our life repeatedly we need to read and study and contemplate upon the word over and over and over our whole life in order to keep our mind and spirit sharp and alert to the attack and the deceptions of the devil. A sharpened knowledge of the Bible exposes falsehoods and doctrinal error. We need to sharpen our minds with the scriptures. Understand that from time to time. False doctrines and false teachings. Can even creep into the church worldwide. They come in through deception. To well meaning souls. To well meaning church attenders. You see. They come in through deception. To well meaning souls. Ignorant of the word of God. They may uh, attend church. They may read the Bible from time to time. But they've never meditated and studied. And, and thought about what it means that they're reading. You see. And so it can come in. You see. And. and, and, and and so, uh, to well-meaning souls who are ignorant of the word. Souls who are Sunday Christians, but who fail to invest quality time into the study of God's word. Souls who, ha who are then prime candidates to be led astray. Because they didn't invest that time. Over the years, I have recognized a number of doctrinal errors 
uh, uh, subtly taught and promoted within the church worldwide. I, I, every once in a while, you see a, a false teaching or doctrine start to try to creep up into the church somewhere around the world, locally or, or, or some other on television or somewhere, <coughs> and, or some uh, document you get, literature, and all of a sudden this, this teaching, this twisting of the scripture comes in or just plain doctrinal error comes, uh, com starts to come across. And I've seen it off and on through the years. Uh, one will not recognize these cunning maneuvers. So you can, sit in the, you can sit in the church. People can sit right there in the church and not recognize... Sunday after Sunday, they can sit in the church and not recognize these cunning maneuvers unless their sword is sharp with the knowledge of the Holy Scriptures. A sharpened sword will cut through deceit and expose its scheme. You must know your enemy's tactics. He does not always use the same tactics on everyone. How he might uh, try to deceive or attack me it may be different than you. He uses what will entice you, discourage you, distract your focus, and so on. Only when your mind is sharpened with the double-edged sword of the scriptures will you be able to see the tactics he will try on you. So that takes us to number four and our next thing. Uh, what do we need to know and do to secure victory? Okay, let's, let's re rehearse them. Know there is an enemy, number one. Number two, understand your enemy's tactics. Number three, choose the way of resistance. And number four, prepare for battle. Prepare for battle. Uh, chapter 13 of First Samuel, beginning with verse 22. So it came about on the day of battle. Okay, so we have that day of battle. That there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any. No one. Not in the hand of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. But they were found only with Saul and Jonathan, his son. <clears throat> and the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Mish Mishmash. The enemy was preparing for attack. But there was no battle ready weapons found in Israel's army. None were sharpened. Only King Saul and his son Jonathan had sharpened battle ready weapons. Not even the guards, not even the soldiers had suitable weapons for battle and defense. Out of all Israel's army, only two men had swords that were ready for battle. Battle-ready swords. Battle-ready weapons. Let me tell you, there is a price to be paid in order to be ready to fight and win a battle in life. The enemy knows when you're strong. Satan knows when you're strong. He knows if you're battle-ready. Ready. He considers carefully about attacking you. He looks for your weakest, your weak areas. Is there sin in your life? If so, then you're a prime candidate for attack. He wants, he, he waits. He waits for you to let down your guard. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. Get rid of any sin. Be ready for Satan's attacks. A good soldier must practice and train to be prepared for war. Think about it. 
A good soldier has to practice. He has to practice and train in order to be ready for war. In life, there are many battles that come. Many problems that we face in this life. We Christians are in the world, though we are not of the world. We are in the world. We live in the wor world. We deal in the world. We are citizens of heaven. And we're citizens. We have dual citizenship. We're, dual, uh, we're a citizen of whatever country we're living in. But we are citizens of this world. We are not of the world, but we live in it. And we relate to the world. We Christians have been adopted into the kingdom of God, but we face challenges in this life. Will we be ready? That's our question. Will we be ready for the battles? John 16, 33, Jesus warned us that in the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, he says. I have overcome the world. Jesus has successfully traveled this road before us. He can help us win the battles. If we'll listen to his guidance and follow his examples and learn from the word as Jesus was a student of the word himself, we need to be a student of the word, the scriptures, the Bible. Few times... Can we see the enemy on his way in, in your life and on my, in my life? Few times can we see Satan coming and getting ready for an attack upon us, giving us the time to prepare. Oh, Satan's coming. I better prepare. Let's see. Let's get the uh, scripture out. Let's see. Um, I wonder how he's going to attack, though. Hmm. Okay, uh, okay, here he comes. Oh, all right, I know what he's going to do, so i got to look up the scripture verse that deals with that. Okay, uh, he'll be here tomorrow. Okay, so i got all day today to start, a t uh, start preparing. Or he'll be here next month, uh, so i got plenty of time to start studying the scriptures, dealing with that subject of attack. No, very few times can we see the enemy on his way, if at all. Most of life's battles come when least expected. Everything's going along fine. Boom! What in the world is that? Almost like an accident. Boom! It was an attack. You know? Uh, kind of like these space shows. You're, you're it's traveling in space and oh, weapons powered up. Boom! They shot at us. Oh boy. You know? And so we... Unexpectedly almost. And so <clears throat> we have to be, uh, and that's the way it is in life, we have to be ready. Uh, most of the battles come when least expected. You don't have time then to prepare for the battle. There's no time to prepare for a battle when you're in the midst of a battle or a battle started. The problem is upon you and it's too late. Consider how the enemy came upon Samson, uh, a biblical Samson, and it was too late for him. He foolishly lost his source of strength. As you read the scriptures, you find he lost his source of strength, and time was not on his side to gain it back. His hair was cut, and, and, the, and the enemy attacked and overpowered him. He did not have enough time to grow his hair back before or during the fight. And so as a result, he was captured and made a slave. He became a slave because he, did not, he was not battle ready. He became a slave be, also in part because he, couldn't, uh, he didn't have time to... Uh, Prepare for war, uh, for battle in the middle of a battle. Again, the time to prepare for a battle is before a battle arrives. Don't allow Satan to overpower you. Uh, though, uh, I mean, through the don't allow him to overpower you through neglecting your personal Bible study. Don't let him overpower you through neglecting one's personal 
uh, time reading and meditating and thinking about the scriptures. Your Bible study. Personal Bible study. Uh, I'm beyond recommending just Bible reading alone. Okay? It's, it, it's not enough. Just to read your Bible is not enough. I already said we need to understand God's word. See? Too many people just read the Bible and they understand little about its contents. It's like taking a bucket to a, uh, to a house fire when you need a fire truck. You need more. You see, you need to have understanding, not just knowledge of the scriptures. You need to understand scriptures. And that comes as we, uh, as we spend hours uh, being taught personally by the Holy Spirit. As uh, we spend time pondering the pages of the inspired book, his inspired book. Turn off that TV and get in the book. Get in the book. Only you... Yourself can prevent force. No, oh no, that wrong advertisement. Only you yourself can become battle ready. Only you can become battle ready. No one can do it for you. I can't. I can only assist you. Okay, I can assist you in becoming battle ready. And that's what Sundays and Wednesdays are for. But I cannot make you battle ready. You have to choose to do it yourself. And I assist you. Sundays and Wednesdays here at Solid Rock, we assist you. The time to prepare for spiritual battle is before the threat shows up at your door. Before the sabers are rattled. There's a price to be paid in order to be uh, uh, battle ready. It's kind of like, uh, uh, like our modern day. They say peace through strength. You know, have a strong military. It helps make for peace so others don't want to attack you. And in the spiritual realm, if Satan knows that you're a strong Christian and you're aware when he starts trying some sneak attacks on some other people around you and you're aware of it, then he may just leave you alone for the time being. But you've got to keep an eye out there for the, an, uh, for the enemy. And you've got to remain strong. And you've got to remain strong in the scriptures, you see. So the time to prepare for spiritual battle is before the threat shows up at your door. There is a price to be paid in order to be battle ready. We don't know when the enemy is, is going to raise his head. But we must be ready. The enemy is sly and looking for weakness in your defenses. The enemy is looking for victory. Uh, he has been preparing for war. And is even now looking for an advantage. He's looking for a way to defeat you and me. The enemy of your soul has been fighting this war for centuries. Even thousands of years. And he is battle hardened. We got to understand that. It's not a piece of cake. He's battle hardened. It's an adversary. That we are fighting. A spiritual advers adversary. But he is no match for the weapons that God has available for us through Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about the armor of God. And you can look in the scriptures and find out what the armor of God is. But we must take these weapons and train with them so that uh, so we know how to use them effectively <clears throat> know that even a mere hand can be a weapon for a soldier in battle 
if that soldier's hand is battle trained. I'm sure our military pe people are trained for hand-to-hand -hand combat. On the spiritual side, God can turn our hands into powerful weapons. Not, uh, not our fist, but simply our hands, if we learn to use them. Mark 16, 18. There's an example. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Your hand, a weapon of power against the enemy. Believe it and receive the power of the weapon as decreed by God. That's a decree of, from God. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Receive that power. The power of the gift of the Holy Spirit. The power of God's of God uh, and, and that power for the weapon as decreed by God our mouth can also be a weapon if it's trained properly revelations 12 11 and uh, uh, they overcame we're talking about the Christians the Christians overcame him Satan uh, by the word of their testimony uh, yes our hands Tongue, mind, bodies need to be battle ready. Disciplined and trained in the ways of the Lord. Through scripture and discipleship training. That is what we're all about here at Solid Rock. We're not playing church here. We are serious about living a Christian life. We're serious about making advances against the enemy of our soul. We're serious about positive change in our life. To be more like Christ. We help prepare you here at Solid Rock. We help to prepare you to fight the good fight. Not only for your protection, but for the sake of your fellow Christians. Ready to fight their sicknesses to help with their needs maybe it will be just a hug by a trained arm by a trained arm giving them a hug a pat on the back with a trained hand you see we must sharpen our understanding with the word of God, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. We must pay the price in order to be battle ready. There's a cost to being ready for battle. There's a cost to being able to fight. And there's a cost to being able to win. That cost is time, time, your time spent in the word and prayer. Prayer and study of the Bible. We must not be distracted by the world nor the things of it. You cannot expect to win unless you pay the price of a winner. Unless you pay the price of a winner, being a winner, you, must, you cannot expect to win. A person who has not spent, time, spent any time in the word is not ready for battle. They are not ready to fight the enemy of their soul. The sharpness of their biblical knowledge is dull. Because they haven't spent time in the word. So their biblical knowledge, the sharpness of it is dulled. And the person who does not attend church regularly, neither are they ready for the battles they are to face. For they lack battle instructions they don't know how to fight they don't know how to properly use the armor of God for example look up the armor of God and study it out what's the armor of God how does it apply to your life how does it apply to spiritual battles look into that that's one example look in the scriptures every time you every time you get it start reading the Bible pray first and invite the Holy Spirit invite God to help you to understand what you need to understand that day as you read a person who cries out in prayer only at the time of trouble. Think about it. A person who cries out in prayer. Lord help me. They cry out in prayer. Only in the time of trouble. Is not prepared for battle. 
They are totally reliant upon God's mercy. And that mercy is great and has many times rescued those unprepared. But see, God wants better for us. God wants us to be trained and ready to fight on our own. To be the big boys and girls, so to speak. To be men and women of God. Trained and ready to fight and win battles. On our own and at any time. Sneak attack. I'm ready. You see. You don't have time to get ready on a sneak attack. You got to already be trained and ready for that battle. He wants us to grow up strong in the use of the armor uh, that he issues us. To be trained in following his voice of command. If the Lord tells us to go to the left, we go to the left. He tells us to move on, we move on. See, God would give instructions like that. In, the, in, the, in, in You can look in Bible examples. You know, sometimes he would tell them to, to, uh, uh, to, to move or not to move. As they sought the guidance of the Lord, they would say, go and do. You know, should, should I, uh, you know, David once prayed about, uh, should I attack or not? And the Lord said, yes, go and you will win the victory. I tell you, when the Lord tells you you're going to win the victory before the battle even starts, you got confidence going into that battle. And, and that confidence is uh, like a, is almost like a weapon, you know. Because you already know the outcome. You're just going in there to win. So if he says go on, you go. If he says stay, you stay. If he says go to the right, you go to the right. If he says go down to such and such a street, I want you to go there. You say, well Lord, I don't know why you want me to go there, but okay. And you go and then you find out the reason why once you get there. Or he may take you there and then take you somewhere else after that, you see. Uh, it, uh, the Spirit of the Lord told Philip to go to this chariot. And so Philip went to that chariot of this uh, Egyptian on his way back to Egypt. And once Philip got there, uh, he, he found out that he needed to explain the scriptures. That the guy had a, had a question of something he was reading in the Bible. At least that guy was searching. He was reading something in the Bible. And so Philip had a conversation with him. And ended up uh, winning the person to Christ. And, and they pulled the chariot over. And, they, and the man was baptized. Water baptized right there. But if Philip wasn't willing to go, if he wasn't following the voice of the Lord, then that person, perhaps, maybe he would have never gotten saved, that Egyptian. Or been uh, delayed. His salvation may have been delayed. Or God would have asked someone else because he asked you first and you didn't go at his command. If you realize that and realize that God asked you and you didn't and then somehow you found out that God then went to somebody that you knew and asked them to do the same thing that you didn't do. How, what a heartache that would be. And it's probably happened. It's probably happened a lot. So we need to learn the voice of God. And we, yeah, we might make some mistakes along the way. And God understands mistakes. We repent and we say, Lord, help me to learn better next time. And we learn the voice of God. We learn the direction of God. We learn how to, uh, how to fight supernatural battles for the win. So he wants us to be, to grow strong in the use of the armor and, and to be trained in following his voice of command.
the invitation this morning that I want you to think about is for every person here who is serious about being a warrior of Christ. Everyone who is watching this, uh, uh, this video, who wants to be a warrior of Christ, determine this day that you are going to prepare yourself and train as a soldier in the Lord's army. army. Uh, train and prepare for battle. Decide to be a relevant soldier in his army. Clean up and clean out the junk and clutter from your life. Making room for more of God's fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. To operate in you and through you. The fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Other things that God wants to, to uh, work at in your life. Open yourself to change. Change for the better. Change for the better. And change for the battle. I cannot do it for you. It's a decision you have to, be, uh, to make. I will prepare. And that's your challenge this morning. Prepare for the win. Prepare for change. So that you can be battle ready. And uh, so let's, let's just pray for a moment. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, you heard this message that, uh, that I just preached, Father. And I pray that you would encourage the believers out there. Encourage the believers here in you. Lord, I pray that you would challenge them this morning to pick up their weapon. Lord, the sword of the Spirit. And begin to study it, perhaps like they've never studied it before. Look into it. Investigate it. Learn how to use their weapon. And Lord, the Bible, your, your inspired word teaches us about other, other things that we have. Uh, other uh, hands, uh, you know, our hands are weapons and tools to be used in our spiritual fight against the enemy. And in, with life's battles, you know, our, our hands, our minds, our mouth to speak the word of God. That's a, that's a weapon. That's a force. Speaking the word of God. Lord, help us to learn to be battle ready. Lord, help us to be determined. Encourage us to determine for ourselves to become battle ready. To be a, a valuable soldier. In your kingdom, Father. One that's not just sitting around at the campfire, so to speak. Uh, but, but one who is prepared for battle. Should the enemy decide to attack. That we will be ready for that attack. In our life or perhaps even on behalf of someone else, Lord. Another believer that we can stand with that other believer and fight with them. And help them to win their battle. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you that you did not just create humanity and forget about us, but you created us and you desire to have a relationship with us. You desire to help us in this life to have a more uh, blessed life. Here on this side of heaven, Father. A blessed life on this side of heaven and, and, and an eternity with you. For all who decide to place their, 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 their remainder of their life into your care. And, and uh, follow your ways, Father. And I thank you for that blessed hope that we have through Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming and, and suffering for us, Lord. And then helping us to have the victory. So thank you for setting the example through the life of Jesus. That we can look to him. And learn lessons from him. And learn lessons from the, the other apostles. And that, that, that uh, were inspired by Jesus. And learned from him. And, we can, and, and even Old Testament believers. Who, who uh, made mistakes. And, and, and allowed themselves to be corrected. And. And, and others who went ahead and they followed you through faith 
and, uh, and stood their ground in faith. And they won great victories in faith. And thank You, Lord, for grace when we make the blunders, Lord. That we can come to You and seek forgiveness in our life, Lord. And we can uh, stand back up and move forward in You. Pick up our weapons of warfare and move forward in You. And become stronger and strengthened in You, Lord. Thank You, Lord, for victory. Victory in Jesus. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, we ask, and we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, this morning uh, we will uh, turn now and uh, into a time of worship. So let us prepare our hearts for worship. And let us worship our Lord, our Savior, our God, our Redeemer, our Captain, our Commander and Chief. The commander in chief of the heavenly kingdom of which we belong. Let's praise him. Let's worship him. For he is worthy to be praised. Our mentor. Let us praise him now. This new day will bring forth a body in one accord. But in this hour the vision will be made. A people within a people, a church within a church. For the eye of the Lord has been looking, and the eye of the Lord does search. For those who have walked the straight and narrow, and turned not from his ways, to them a white robe shall be given says the ancient of days a people within a people those who have not turned to the side a people within a people those who chose to abide and now I call them my bride yes now I call them my bride so come on to me, my people. Come on to me, my bride. To a place that I have prepared for you, where my spirit will no longer strive. Where my spirit will no longer strive. A people within a people. A church within a church. For the eye of the Lord has been looking, and the eye of the Lord does search. Yes, the eye of the Lord does search.